Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are student from UniKL MyTech. We make this video for our integrated assessment. This integrated assessment is under the combination subject between Tamadun Islam dan Tamadun Asia and Professional English 1. We were given Oman as a country and given a task to conduct the event based on the country. So, in this video, we will explain to you guys about the interesting places that you can find if you visit Oman one day. So, the first place is Muscat. Muscat is the capital and is the most populated city in Oman. It is the seat of the Governorate of Muscat. According to the National Center for Statistics and Information, NCSI, the total population of Muscat Governorate was 1.4 million people. The metropolitan area spans approximately 3,500 square kilometers and includes six provinces. Muscat is located in the northeast Oman. The Tropic of Chancer passes south of the area. It is bordered to its west by the plains of Al Batinah region and to its east by Ash Sharkiyah region. The interior plains of Ad Dakhiliyah region border Muscat to the south, while the Gulf of Oman form the northern and western of the city. The water along the coast of Muscat runs deep, forming two natural harbour in Mutrah and Muscat. The central Hajjah Mountains run through the northern coastline of the city. Muscat features a hot, arid climate with long and very hot summer and warm winter. The climate generally is very hot and also very humid in the summer, with temperature frequently reaching as high as 45 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. Now, let me tell you about the economic activity in the city. The traditional export of the city included dates, mud of pearl, and fish. Many of the soak of Mutra sell these items and traditional Omani artifacts. Petroleum Development Oman or PDO has been central to Muscat's economy since at least 1962 and it is the country's second largest employer after the government. PDO's major shareholder includes Royal, Dutch, Shell, Total and Partex and its production is estimated to be about 720,000 barrels per day. So, with all that, I can say that Muscat is very interesting place for you to visit one day. So, we will go to my next teammate and we will hear what they're going to share with us. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Eman, for the explanation about Muscat. I will explain about the Western Haja. What is the Western Haja? The Western Haja is a mountain that is divided into two parts, namely the Western part and the Eastern part, or better known by the name Haja Barat, Haja Timur. Why it was divided into two parts? It is because there was a natural path known as Jurang Sumai. This is a 15 km road from the Muscat to the Western Haja. This mountain has its own history. It was during the 20th century while political split happened between the Sultan of Muscat and the leader of religion that also known as the Imam. The split formed two different governments. 
Sultan Muscat leads the edge of mountain while the Imam leads the rural area. The rural area parts consist a few area which uh, Nizwa, Bahla, Nak and Dustak. This is one of the parts to reach the Jabal Sham. The peak which was 3,009 meters high. The western Haja Rish which flora just like Rig and olive tree. The interesting part of this mountain is when we are climbed up to 2000 height, we can see the view of the town. There, the town is still practicing lifestyle like planting and herding god and camel to preserve their township lifestyle. In my opinion, this mountain should be visited by the local and foreign tourists because of its own unique which include the rock mountain especially Arabic country. Not only that, we call it a unique mountain because of the splitted part, the west and the east part. Just that from me, thank you. Assalamualaikum. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you Saiful for the explanation. And now, I will present you about Al-Batina and Al-Dahiro. First stop is Al-Batina. Al-Batina is a region occupied in an important location on the coast of Gulf of Oman. It lay between Kamalaha in the north and Ras Al-Hamra in the south. Uh, most of Oman population were in the region because Al-Batina is full of green plains between Haja Mountain and the sea. Alright, we we'll go further. Al-Batina is the famous city in the Oman. The most popular city there was Sohar. Okay. What Sohar have? And where is Sohar? Okay, Sohar is Oman capital during the ancient era. And it is located in Al-Batina. It is notable for being the hometown of the legendary Simbad the Sailor. Simbad the Sailor was a big icon for Sohar because he is a legendary fighter and sailor who, who sail around the world and have great adventure. Simbad the Sailor was also being filmed by Disney Picture and some other production. Okay, what? You can do in Sohar. First, you can discover the 14th century of Sohar Fort. The Sohar Fort is most exclusive history landmark in Oman. Here you get truly to understand the life of soldier in the early 14th century. The structure itself was built in the 13th century. It has a tunnel inside the tower which was used as an escape route at time of a siege. Moreover, the town of Said Swaini bin Sultan Al Busaid resides here. He is considered one of the great rulers of Oman between 1856 to 1866. Then, what else you can do? You can buy local handicraft at traditional handicraft soap. The soap roughly measures around 7,000 square. Meters. You can find just every type of craft shop you want. You can also find various products from different industry. Just as the seller, you can get leather, you can get ceramic, curtain, textile, everything you can have. Then, after you go shopping, you can spend your day with your kids at Fun City in Sephamore. If you're traveling in Oman, if family, then Sephamore is a must. 
Cause what? Because here yeah, you can let your kid have an amazing day at the front city. The self and more itself can refer every need so parents won't get bored. It was a wide array of food options and shelves to keep your preoccupied while your kids having fun running and running around the indoor play areas at the fun city. There were also skills game, adventure game, birthday package and everything to for the kids to have fun. The best part is they also have big ride so all the family members can ride on it. Then you can enjoy a a day at Camel Racing Park. It was usual for Arab country for Camel, but you never often saw Camel racing each other, right? Uh, at at Sohar, they have Camel racing tracks. So wherever you come to Sohar again, make sure you book a ticket so you can watch it. Then. After you watch Camel, you can go on a picnic at Wadi Hibi. Another great day to relax while you're in Sohar is go to a picnic. More than better way to do have it in Wadi Hibi is only around 63 kilometers away from the city. Not too far but not too close to the city either. Here you can really take the beauty of the countryside. You can even visit the home of the ancient dwelling of the early Omanis. If this doesn't suit your taste, you can visit the field of offering with these and papayas. So that's all for me. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. And before I proceed to the next video, let me introduce myself. My name is Mama Asriza bin Mama Asmawi. My metric number is 57212120449. Thank you, Zul. Okay, then. We proceed to the next district of Oman, which is Musandam. Musandam is a peninsula and an Omani enclave within the United Arab Emirates, which means that it is a piece of territory which belongs to Oman, but it is separate from it. The Musandam also have a great strategic importance as basically, they shape the Strait of Hormuz, they narrow gate to the Persian Gulf, and the path which most of the world gas goes through. Furthermore, the Musandam Peninsula is barely populated and outside of Kazab. You are likely to find just a few settlements at least in the western part of the region, which is the most accessible one. Musandam is also home to some traditional village, only accessible by boat, which have been able to preserve the traditional Persian Gulf culture. Kashan Island in Iran being one of uh, the very few places. However, this region has some of the greatest landscape and most fascinating marine wildlife in the Arab Gulf Peninsula. There is the map of the Oman that we can go to do the exciting activity. There I have a lot of things can we do in Musandam. One of the activity is we can take a tour on the cruise. The forge of Musandam are definitely the highlight of, of visiting Oman and the best way to enjoy them is on a dough cruise. A dough is a traditional Arab boat and the cruise consists of sailing around the forge. Some dolphins are sightseeing and if you like snorkeling as well. On this activity, we usually take a half day cruise in a big boat shared with other tourists. However, there is also the possibility of renting a smaller one for just your friends and family, as well as going on a two-day cruise and staying overnight. In addition, in Musanda also have a tens of kilometers of pretty virgin beaches, all the way from the border to Kazab. The best spot where to swing, however, would be Koch Naj, a pretty hidden beach which is 30 km from Kasab. To get to Kojinash, you need first to drive to the top of the small mountain from where you get standing view of the bay and the Omani Forge. Furthermore, if you want to go to the beautiful place, I suggest you must go to Kojinash because that place is one of the prettiest spots in the Musandam Peninsula and 
if you come during a quiet hour of the day, you are likely to see turtle approaching the shore. Next, we also can do activities such as diving or snorkeling because Musana is the best place to do it. There is a decent amount of coral and big marine animal. If you are luckily, you also can found a huge matawi while snorkeling. Moreover, you cannot leave Musana without trying any of the seafood they are famous for. Many restaurants in Kasa will serve you fresh shrimp, calamari, and other kinds of fish, which are delicious and surprisingly cheap. Lastly, I just want to say this place have a lot of the beautiful scenery and the exciting activity we can do with a family or friends. Furthermore, we can get a new experience from this place. That's all. Next, I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you. The next Om Sandam is the Sharkia. Sharkia is a vast ocean, sand and mountains spread across the southeastern most tip of the Arabian Peninsula. So, Sharkia is one of the of the few places in Oman that you all can still see the evidence of the country's traditional Bedou lifestyle. So actually, uh, the full name of Bedou is Bedouin, which is the people who live who lives in one of the Z areas of the middle middle coast and raises camels, sheep, or goats. They believe that they are they are the descendants of Shem, son of Noah, whose ancestor was Adam. So the, the average of the population Badu is four to five million and the traditional Badu diet traditional Badu diet consisted mainly of camel meat, drunkul or hot, boiled with bread or cooked with rice. So number D, Badu do not have much time for do the sports but they do enjoy the caramel racing, which is they, they train their cameras to drop. So the next is Sharkia divides into three main parts. Firstly is the course with a string with a string of with a string of attraction including the historic town of Korea, Kolhat and Sur and the and the turtle beach at Las Algins. Secondly is the mountains. The craggy height of the eastern Hajar mountains provide numerous spectacular spectacular hiking and afford driving possibilities. So the third is the dune. The Sharkia interior the Sharkia interior boots boots of boots a further sweater of rewarding destination including the magnificent dunes of the Wahiba Sands and a string of interesting towns. So uh, the next of Sharkia is the Dofar. Thank you Mahimin for your explanation about Sharkia. Next I will share to you about Dofar. Dofar or as known as also known as Dufar. Dufar is a historical region in Sultan Oman. Stretching southwest from Cape Al Shabatat on the coast to, of the Arab Arab Sea to the border of Oman Yemen, the northern boundary of the area was never established, but the wadi the wadi Mushin, located about 150 miles, aka 240 kilometer inland, is usually included in the territory. A large desert of stony plains and Stan Dunes is situated north east not, not east of Dofa, adding to the region's isolation from northern Oman. Now, because of its monsoon, climate and temperature, vegetation and bird life, the Sarana coastal plain, about 40 miles long and ranging from 1 to 6 miles, 
white facing the Arabian Sea is considered one of the most beautiful in Arabia, especially in its southwestern part. The region has constantly flowing stream, making its Oman's most fertile area. The rugged Al Qora mountains rise to height between 3,000 feet until 4,000 feet inland, but for about 10 miles, the region's earliest recorded settlement dates from the 12th century before century. The, the area was ruled as a tributary of Oman and Ahmad ibn Muhammad al-Manjawa at the end of 12th century. It was ruled by Muhammad ibn al-Aqil al-Jaibi in the earlier 19th century. In 1965, Ohotari tribesmen baked by neighborhood, neighbor, neighboring Yemen, Eden, revolted against the restrictive policies of Sultan Said ibn Taimu. They were defeated in 1975. Coconuts, alfalfa, sorghum, bananas and vegetables are among the main crops in Dofa. The area is leading producer of frankincense worldwide. Oman Castle, raising area mainly for milk, is Dofa. In the northeast, there are oil fields spread along a sandy beach. The coastal town of Salalah was the summer resident of the former of Sultan Oman. Mirba, Okah, Raisut, and Rahyu are other significant cities, all situated on the plain. The Alkara Mountain, north to Tamril, where a graded road continues northward, are crossed by a road from Salalah. The mountain sector is populated almost entirely by peoples of Kora, Sheva, and Mahra. Naj and Katir are the majority of the people on the plain of Salalah. There are three common visited places by tourists. First is Muxel. It's a long stretch of clear blue water with white sand and beautiful cliffs on either side of the water. It's a magnificent and picture square landscape, perfect for a picnic and a quick swim. You can even drive through the beach. There are also many cute traditional huts at the beach, at the beach where you can have your own barbecue lunch. Next is Wadi Darbat. It's a splendid lush green valley with a river running through the middle. The surrounding, the surrounding hills have small caves with which people can hike up to. It's the perfect spot for a little family picnic or a friendly gathering. During the Karif or monsoon season, the wadi is packed with locals and tourists that have come to enjoy the scenery. There are many small stalls and restaurants at the valley selling street food like shawarmas, popcorn and ice cream. Lastly, Sultan Kabus Mosque is the largest mosque in Salalah and is, is located in the city center. It's a colossal structure with an elegant mix of Arabic and modern architecture. Its interior are designed, are designed to instill a sense of purity and humbleness for believers during prayers. It is adorned with huge chandeliers, green carpet, and wall pattern. The electric structure is fully air-conditioned. The mosque has been named after the Sultan of Oman, Sultan Qaboos. Uh, for your information, non-Muslims are also allowed to visit the mosque and marvel at sight. In conclusion, each nation has its own appeal, given their op Given their own popularity, they still have their own country, country's historical past. Oman has its own past, which has never, which has been their pride, pride in their own country. We are also very confident that history, which happened many years ago, has made the nation stand still and become stronger. As the citizen, we must defend our own country from internal and, and, exter and external problems. All that's from us. Thank you and have a lovely day.